Hey, I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Give this video a like. Podcast below in the description. Go check it out. Coordinator hot seat, John. We started doing a hot seat list. We started talking coordinators. We stopped. We said, let's do a whole list about coordinators. So here we are. This list is hard. This is a hard list because there's, I think, a lot of guys who are feeling heat. That's just the nature of being a coordinator. Why don't you start who you got? Number one. And, I th- and last year is a good example, right? Like the Cowboys, McCarthy, Mike Nolan, and obviously most people, including I know us, were like Mike Nolan, but he didn't last. But I think you go new coaches. They're not going to go anywhere. Boom, by the end, of the, halfway through the season, everyone's like, is it, things change fast, right, with coordinators. Uh, to me, the name that really jumps out would be Todd Downing. Yeah. Given our experience around the guy when he was with the Raiders, it was a disaster given what he, you know, and it wasn't just because the Raiders were a disaster. It was because he filled the shoes. Now, they fired a guy, right? He's filling in for a guy that became a head coach. But either way, he became a coordinator for a coordinator who had dominated at his spot, right? Uh, Bill Musgrave. Is he still the Cal offensive coordinator? He is. I think he is. He was unreal. Really, both of his two years there. But that second year when their offense, what, I mean, almost carried him to the division until Derek's ankle broke. They were a dynamic offense. And then Todd was terrible. (laughs) I mean, really bad. Now, I think any human watching this can relate. Maybe sometimes you get an opportunity and you're not quite ready, but you can't say no and you're swimming. You eventually get to do that opportunity again and you're more equipped. But he has taken over for a coordinator I would say that it was viewed way higher than Musgrave, right, in Arthur Smith. <laughs> they won playoff games with them. Uh, they just were a elite offense. They're, and they're a program. Job. They're a program ready to take the next step. And yeah. didn't and they, they also trade for like. a didn't they also just trade for a pretty famous guy? Tom Brady? Uh, Julio Jones. Oh, Julio Jones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like it. Can't argue. Todd Downing on the list. Number two. Uh, we're gonna make five. We'll see if anybody gets bumped off. Jason Garrett. Jason Garrett. I mean, the combination of quarterback, young, developing, ton of attention on him, uh, New York market, already, you know, came in when he got hired, it was underwhelming and it got criticized. I mean, there is no easier recipe to me for coordinator hot seat than Jason Garrett. Like famous, so everyone has no problem criticizing everything he does because you've been talking about him for a decade as a head coach in the league. So Jason Garrett's got to be in the top five. How about this guy? Saquon Barkley back from injury. They signed Kenny Galladay. Ton of money. Ton of money. They, they got screwed with the two Alabama wide receivers got taken before they wanted him. The Eagles jumped him. But they traded back, and they took the, the little dude from Florida who's good. So they draft a wide receiver in the first round. They got their star running back back, and they paid a lot of money for a really, really good wide receiver in Galladay. Like that's, they're invested heavily on that side of the ball. So... And their head coach is a wide receiver coach. He's a quarterback at heart, but he's a wide receiver coach for Belichick and special teams. That's something to keep an eye on. Also, it's year two for him, right? You don't. You you, maybe you get two years. You don't get more than three if it's not going well. Year two is the year to make a change if it's if it's bad. Okay, these two guys are going to be hard to take off the list. Go ahead. Who's who's uh, who's our next contender? I I feel they're they're not going anywhere. (laughs) I have Vance Joseph, Mm. uh, defensive coordinator for the Arizona Cardinals. They have invested heavily on defense. Their last two picks, the last two years in the first round, were Isaiah Simmons. uh, And a lot of my buddies in the league thought he doesn't have a true position. And it's going to be, you got to figure that guy out because he is kind of a chess piece. Their middle linebacker, who just got arrested, that was the 16th overall pick. So you draft a sweet safety, in theory, slash linebacker, and a middle linebacker. And you bought J.J. Watt this offseason. Now, I'm not saying he's making these moves, but that's whether he's on board or not, like, they're there. So, uh, and his head coach knows nothing about defense, clearly, anyone who's followed Cliff's career. That's a lot of pressure on a guy that just has not been a very good defensive coordinator when he's got a shot. Yeah, I, I wonder, there's so much attention on that offense um, that somehow he get to fly under the radar all, you know, if... But, but what if this guy, they're like, uh, let's say, what if I give you this record? Three and six... But they're they have like a top five offense and they're, they're losing games thirty to thirty five. Yeah, that's a midseason that firing. Yeah. All right, I'll put him on. He's number three on the list. We'll see if if he gets bumped off or not. But I, uh, knowing how you feel about him, I doubt he will be. Okay. Um, next up for me, John. Jonathan Gannon. Who he play for? The Philadelphia Eagles. Now, is Nick Sirianni going to be one and done? Probably not. But it has happened before. 
in the in the words of Lou Brown. But to me, when you are a head coach with zero resume, your staff can change in a heartbeat if it goes bad year two. They don't necessarily want to fire you right away year one, but if it goes bad year one, you're, and it's in Philadelphia, your staff can change before your eyes blink, and you might not even get to hire the next guys. So all due respect, Jonathan Gannon, just Guys, my, I don't know. My, it doesn't my mean... first year in, in Philly, they fired Sean McDermott. So they are not afraid of firing coaches. Well, Sean McDermott, right? Sean McDermott. But then, uh, what's his name? Castillo was a one and done coordinator too, and Andy handpicked him. Yep. There was. There's been a lot of coaches fired over the years in Philly. So I mean, just I, how can he not be on this list? And again, he might be the next great coordinator in the NFL. Just because I'm I'm not sure doesn't mean you you know it's it's not the guy Haberman's stamp of approval, but just given the cir- this is more a circumstantial pick than it is that I think Jonathan Gannon's not a good coach it has nothing to do with that and they just might not be very good and usually when you're not good in the NFL people just get fired. Uh, I have an interesting name because I think this guy's pretty highly thought of when you just say his name, but there's going to be a lot of added pressure and that's Joe Brady. Uh, they they trade for Sam Darnold, Christian McCaffrey's back from injury. They've invested heavily on offense. And again, there's just been a lot of hype behind this guy, right? If he had been on the right staff, like if he had gone to work for a team that had been in the playoffs last year, he hell, he might be a head coach. But we know these things change fast. What if they just suck? There, I, I think most people think, I know I do, that they're going to be like a very watchable team. Like that's just a team that we're going to keep an eye on. I'm excited to watch. We think that way a lot about maybe four or five teams entering every single season, and wouldn't you say a couple of them just flame out and suck? And it, it wouldn't shock. Now that doesn't mean like he wouldn't immediately get hired as like an OC in college or whatever, right? Like he wouldn't. It wouldn't like derail his career, kind of like it did Todd Downing, who we talked about earlier, that had to take a lot of steps back. This guy would immediately become an OC in college, that, that, at minimum. And who knows? Maybe the NFL, other teams, the Eagles, be hard on him, but. I, I do think he's he's a guy just to keep an eye on if they just go four and twelve and Darnold sucks. Okay, I got him on the list right now. We got five guys. Let's see if we can move anybody off the list. Next up, you know, Dar- I'll just say the name Daryl Bevel. Um, clearly, an NFL coordinator has been the story on him was Urban hired him to be the coordinator for the Jags after a long conversation with Russell Wilson. I don't think he belongs on this list for a variety of reasons. The only reason I put him on this list, reasons, one, Trevor Lawrence, two, I don't know what Urban's level of patience will be. Now, Urban is going to be involved in the offense, but what will his level of patience be if it's not going great for them, whether or not it's Daryl Bevel's fault? You know, I, I, I don't think Urban's plan is to be the head coach in an NFL, uh, of an NFL franchise for the next eight years. Like, I, I think this is a small window for him. So, again, I don't think he's on the list, but – like, I'd put him on there ahead of Joe Brady. Um, I think we'll eventually bump Joe Brady off. But what do you think about Daryl Bevel, established NFL coordinator? I was just uh, – Tony Elliott is the offensive coordinator for Clemson, who turns down jobs in the NFL and college all the time, right? He's – him and Venables – I mean, Dabo's paying a lot. He's an elite coordinator and viewed that way in, in the college world, right? So Trevor knows. Now, Trevor, he doesn't look like the guy to complain, but what if he turns on him? And just like, this is not, like, I, Dabo, Tony, hey, Urban, th- I know what I like, and this is not it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I don't hate that one. I have a name a little like Bevel, but he's having way more success. He's just been there a while, and they just, I mean, they are, their goal is at minimum to be in the championship game. I think definitely just to be competing for Super Bowls. And this guy has been polarizing before. Once a general manager's daughter tweeted about him mid-game. He goes by the name of Greg Roman. And a little bit like the last time he found himself in this situation. Even though I, this guy's better, right? Lamar won an MVP. Now, Kaepernick was more accomplished in the playoffs. Lamar is more accomplished in the regular season. But anytime you get a player like that, the team just, what do you want? Like, right. draft a first-round wide receiver. The Niners did that once upon a time. They signed Sammy Watkins. They already have uh, Hollywood, who was a first-round guy that they're pushing. Like They have a lot invested right there. They go out and hire T. Martin and Keith Williams, two wide receiver coaches. So it's just like, you know, what if they – What if they? when I say regress, like they could win 10 – go 10 and 6 and for them feel like, God, we didn't make progress, right? Yeah. Plateau would be the word. What if they plateau? What's more likely? They go, well, 
Time to get Greg Roman a new quarterback. Or that ain't happening. No. Now I ultimate. I, I this is really interesting, right? Because Har- Greg Harbaugh's Roman, Harbaugh's like this guy, right? They're loyal to this individual, and he has G- earned. He has earned. You know, he's earned he kicked a lot a of cool ass throw, for both guys. He kicked he kicked a lot of ass for both Harbaugh brothers, right? Okay, he really I, did. I, I think this is an inspired pick. I don't think it'll end up on our top five, but because I'm going to give you a name now, uh, another one and done situation. Joe Lombardi. You like, love one and done guys. I love coordinators in bad spots with coaches who don't have leverage. Like to me, one and done. This is why Bevel doesn't really belong on the list. Urban's got leverage, okay? Yeah. But Nick Sirianni Urban, does not Urban, have leverage. Urban, Urban can tell Shad Shad Khan no. Right. Right. But I think the Chargers situation, while great, also could be a little sticky. Now Brandon Staley has more leverage than Nick Sirianni, but I know what Justin Herbert just looked like on a terrible team. I know what it looked like. It was incredible. One of the greatest rookie seasons in the history of quarterbacking. Statistically the greatest. Most touchdowns ever thrown by a rookie quarterback. It was clear this guy was winning the rookie of the year by like week four, week five. Yeah. And he wasn't half just the league, half the league was tweeting about him. Like, oh my remember Richard Sherman was like, Jesus Christ, what is this up with this guy? And he wasn't because you know why? Because he was great, but he was making splash plays left and right. Like it was he was doing the stuff that Russell Wilson was doing in terms of like throwing yeah, bomb was, touchdowns. So yeah. I gotta put Joe Brady on this list. Again, it's not even a, a Joe Lombardi, excuse me, not Joe Brady. It's not even about Joe per se. It's just a weird spot to be in. And Brandon Staley, you don't get three, four you don't get four years. We know that. If things aren't going well with Justin Herbert after one year, that would make it a hot seat for him. Now, you could counter and say this. Hey, he's got Justin Herbert. Brandon Staley viewed as a very good defensive coach. This is going to go well enough that Joe Lombardi doesn't actually end up losing his job, even if they're not a playoff team. Love the Lombardi pick, though, because here's what the owner know. Our quarterback should be even better next year. If he goes the other way, we're already then be going into year three of Herbert. We don't have time to mess around. Like you're, if We don't believe in you. You're gone. I, I think he's a lock to be on the hot seat just because the the like Todd Downing, he's like the poor man's Todd Downing. They're just in, they're walking into these situations where the bar is really high, and for him it's even harder because it's not like they won. So like, what if what if he just looks bad and we're winning? Like, there's pressure on him. The offense should look sweet. Yeah. Right. Yep. We can't go nine and eight, and Herbert did not had a worse season. We might go. Could we have been eleven or ten or twelve wins without this guy? Honestly, guy, he might be. I'd have Vance Joseph near the top. I'd probably have ta- Todd Downing one. I like that Lombardi pick, though. I think he's a lock on the list. Okay, so we got Downing, Garrett, Joseph, Lombardi, locks. You think Downing's the number one guy, just given what he's uh, him or, I think Jason Garrett could be, just given that Jason Garrett, it's he's been there. We know who he is. They were underwhelmed when they hired him, like the fan base. Daniel Jones, so much okay, attention. I'll, Jason won. I Jason like won. Downing, Vance Joseph, Joe Lombardi. Uh, you know, so so far we've mentioned Joe Brady, Daryl Bevel, Greg Roman, Jonathan Gannon. Like on that list, Greg Roman can't be on that list, right? No, no, he can't. Pat no, Shermer can't. would be another name. Not as you know, I mean, Vic could get a third year, but but again, what, what are you giving Pat? I mean, he's got good receivers actually. He does have good skill guys, but his quarterback situation, you know, Teddy. Um, Shane Waldron, I don't think so. But just as a bright light on Seahawks coordinators for sure. Two guys not on the hot list, John. Co-defensive coordinator of the Vikings, Mike Zimmer. And linebacker coach for the uh, Patriots, Steve Belichick. (laughs) So who's the fifth guy? Jonathan Gannon? Wait, the co-defensive coordinator is Mike Zimmer? Or that is Kid Zimmer? I'm sorry. Yeah, whatever whatever his kid's name is. It might be Mike, but Kid Zimmer. But if if the big Zimmer goes on our other hot seat list, the little Zimmer goes, I think Steve Belichick. I, I really want to see Steve Belichick go to his own team and coordinate. That, to me, is his next step. And I hope it's a team that I watch a lot because I'd be very interested in that. I, I, I would go with one of your, like, I think the Jags. I think any of these teams with a young quarterback where the pressure is just immensely high. Uh, Adam Zimmer, sorry. Adam Zimmer. Adam Zimmer. Uh, I, you, I, you'd I, go Daryl Bevel over Jonathan Gannon, Eagles, DC. Uh, I mean, that's not crazy. They just had what's his name, who was really good for them for a while, right? Uh, the wide nine, the, the, uh, yeah, slap, the Detroit slap Lions on the back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't. I, the, I'll go with Gannon. All right. All right, Todd Downing, Jason Garrett, Vance Joseph, Joe Lombardi, Jonathan Gannon. We are watching you.